Hello, it is V here. Welcome to my channel. I post daily readings, deck reviews, and deck modifications, live streams, and I also collaborate with lovely tarot readers who I love to watch. So hopefully you can subscribe and stick around. Today's video, oh, I also do t challenges occasionally. So today's video is on 31 Days of Tarot. I'm taking Ethany's challenge, 31 Days of Tarot challenge. She does it every year. I think this is the fifth year. Today is day number five, and the question is, what has tarot taught you? So if you're taking part of this in this challenge, please let me know in the comments below, and I would love to watch a video, and check out Ethany's blog. I will have that in my description box. My little backstory is that I just started April of 2019, and a big change helped me start my spiritual path, a big ch personal change, a big shift, a big revelation like just something I, I had a big tower moment and that led me to um well no i was i was going through something and then that led me into looking at other tarot readers and other tarot channels and pick a card readings and everything that i kept picking on whatever piles i picked on resonated with me like you wouldn't believe and like the messages from different readers were all like a story which means that they all they all just uh, intertwined with each other. It was like I was watching an episode back to back. And these were different readers, people who didn't even know each other. They just shuffled. You can see them shuffling the cards. They didn't shoot. You know, sometimes they would ha already pre-shuffle, but most of the times you would see them shuffle right, right in, you know, right before they, they started reading their cards. So, you know, you really got to see the magic happen. And anyway, the piles that I would choose helped me so much. And... I, would, I was like into it for like a few months and then finally, like I would say four or five months or something like that. And then finally, um, it started with one uh, person doing a, a celebrity reading and it took on from there. And then I started seeing people do readings on signs and like, yeah, like I said, pick a card readings. And so anyway, it started from there. And then one day in April, I said, you know what? I want to get my own tarot. I want to learn tarot. And I was kind of scared and apprehensive about it because I've never, like, I, you know, it's the whole taboo thing or, you know, like I grew up fe fearing tarot. I always thought it was like the, you know, the, the other thing, you know, I don't want to even say that word, the O board. I thought it was that. I thought it was something like that, like a version of that. So I was really scared. You know, like, that, that's just like what everybody thinks about. They think, oh, that's just like a portal to whatever. So I didn't realize what it was, but I, you know, I was drawn to it and I had to educate myself to, um, you know, learn more about it and, and chase, chase those fears away and tackle my own, my own fears. <laughs> so um, one day, I, the month of my, my, um, my anniversary, my wedding anniversary, my 15th, my 14th year anniversary with my husband, I asked my, my father figure, I said, hey, do you know anything about tarot? And it just, it, it totally, totally, totally took off from there, my father figure. So I've known him for, a, uh, I know him, I know him since 2018. And, um, and so we've known each other for a year and we've been emailing back and forth. And then there was one time where I emailed him and asked him about tarot and then it just took off from there. I, I felt like he was there, he, he was meant to be there for me, and I feel like he's a gift from my, 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 my biological father. My, my biological father's card keep, kept popping up, King of Pentacles for the Emperor, which is my father figure. So I really feel that he's a gift from me, for me, f and from my father, and he's, he's here to help me, and he's been helping me ever since April of 2019. And I feel like April was like my, my magical month. It means so much to me on different levels. Anyway, um, he's been helping me since day one. We do readings together every single day. I learned so much with him. I'm learning how to work the pendulum too. Whenever I need help with anything, I always ask him for advice, you know? My three go-to people is my, my husband, my daughter, and my father figure, and they're like the people I go to for, you know, when I need advice, and especially spiritual, spiritual advice is my father figure. So. We've been through so much, and every time he goes on vacations, we do readings, and they're like these explosive revelations, and we're like, whoa, and we have ESP moments. So anyway, what I've learned so far, thank you, my father figure, for helping me, by the way, 
It's almost been a whole year and this journey has just changed my world upside down. I've learned so much about myself and there's nothing to be afraid of about. There's nothing to be afraid of. When it comes to tarot and oracles, there's nothing to be afraid of. So um, what I've learned is that, <sighs> wow, spirituality is, it's, it is, you can't even explain it. You have to be in it. You have to be, you have to be on your journey. You have to be on the spiritual quest for you to get it. And I, I realized that there's nothing, there's nothing to fear with tarot. Tarot, oracles, or if you're studying clams or shells. I do have a deck that says that there are 45 different ways to use, um, to you know, for divination, different divination ways. But I'm sure there's more. But you can pretty much use anything. Anyway, anyway, what I'm, what I've learned in my, in my quest is that there's nothing to fear with tarot and oracle. There's nothing to fear. It's just we have to get past that, right? Um, once once you get into it you learn it and practice and practice and practice it unlocks so many things within your your brain your, in your with your intuition and strengthens your abilities your psyche your, your your instincts everything it just it just helps you um it just help i don't know how to explain it it's just it's beyond explaining i can't explain it and, and now that I've been doing it since for almost a year, I've been, I've learned so much about myself. I, I'm very, I'm like more sensitive than I used to be. My eye, my third eye chakra is creating another, th another eye. <laughs> and I, I'm more sensitive to certain things. I pick up on certain energies and I just, I feel like I'm an empath. And I've also discovered that I am a hereditary witch, eclectic tendencies. So I wouldn't have come to that conclusion if it wasn't for tarot and oracles. I've created my own oracles and they help seal the deal with my messages. So I always recommend that people create their own oracle or repurpose playing cards with their own messages and use that as your personal oracle. I feel like at least one oracle with all of your other decks when you do readings so that you have your concise and clear seal, sealing the deal message. <laughs> Um, sign, sealing, and yeah, sign, sealing, delivering your messages with the bow on top with your oracle that you made yourself because it's, com it's coming from your heart, it's coming from your, your intuition, and it just, yeah, it's like a, a, a nice icing on the cake. And I've, I've noticed that time and time again that when I end my readings with my own oracles, they, they like just, they, they, they round it all up, you know? So, anyway, um, what I've learned is that there are so many different ways to, to you know, to 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 connect with source to connect with the divine to connect with yourself and there's nothing to fear and as long as you're, you're keeping yourself protected using your crystals using your your palo santo your essential oils your sage if you have it um black obsidian i would recommend smoky quartz um hematite using you know those things around you like your, your selenite wand also i do have a black obsidian comb that i like to comb my hair with from time to time, as long as you're cleaning, keeping your your, your, your energy safe. I mean, clean your 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 tarot space clean, and you're you're always staying high in your vibrations. Make sure you always come to tarot with your with good energy, good positive energy. Make sure you're you're well rested. Make sure you're well fed. Make sure you're, you're well hydrated. Make sure you're you're in a good mental state. I think it's gonna help you with your readings so much. So. I feel like I've learned so much on my journey and I'm still learning, I'm still learning, I'm still new. I feel like I'm a baby tarot reader, <laughs> a baby reader. Um, I'm still learning, still evolving, still growing and I feel like there's just more to come and I feel like I'm strengthening my skills the more I do my live streams, the more I do pick a card readings and more daily readings and the more decks I, can, I put my hands on, it's just expanding my horizons big time. And I, I do readings for my family and everything's always on point. I do readings in my live streams and every, every, every message resonates. <sighs> Even my general, general messages resonate with people. So I'm, I feel like I'm getting better and better and I'm learning more as I go. So that's what I say. I say, uh, you know, there's nothing to be afraid of with, when it comes to tarot and oracles. You know, if you're, you have good intentions, there's nothing to be afraid of. If you're going, to, going at it with bad intentions and you're being negative and you're just doing it for bad, you know, like negative reasons, then, you know, that might come back to bite you in the butt. So I would just stay, stay clear from that. Um, and I also, what I learned is that tomorrow is not, is not set in stone. I always say this, I always say this, 
you have the power to create your tomorrow. Tomorrow is not set in stone. It's like putty. You can change, you can mold, mold it, change it, uh, flip it around, throw it down, and it will change formation. So you can always change your outcome. If you don't like what us readers have to say, you can always say, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tackle this differently. I'm going to change the way, uh, the, I'm going to change how what I'm doing right now so that tomorrow I can have a better day or have a better outcome, you know? So tomorrow is never set in stone. I, I've learned that. We all have the power to create our realities. If we're changing uh, something, one little thing, that can totally alter what, you know, what originally, <laughs> it can alter. That's all I'm going to say. So... Um, as long as we're taking the steps, you know, if we're, you t if we're giving guidance to people and they're continuing down that path and they can see, see the, you know, the end of the rainbow, the, the, the reading take place, you know. But if there's, you know, putting some, if they're putting a fork in the road and they're stopping what, they're stopping their own growth or transition or they decide to do the opposite of what we say in, in our readings, then that totally alt alters their, their outcomes. So, that's what I've learned. Nothing is set in stone and the energy is fluid. The energies are always changing. That's why I always try to do timeless readings because um, I wanted to grab everybody who needs to hear the message at a certain time. So that's what I've learned. I would also just suggest, you know, um, reading about tarot. What helped me with tarot is, you know, reading about it in the book, writing keywords on my Kawaii tarot. There was a lot of blank space. I wrote a lot of keywords on there. And then um, taking that and uh, learning as fast as I could with the keywords and then uh, uh, taking the book away and not using it for months and just going and then using the Rider Waite Smith and just going with intuition with my cards. So learn about it, be book smart, I guess, and then intuition smart. Books first and then take that away because then you depend on them like crutches and then you go with your intuition because the intuition will guide you. Everybody can always look up a book. But if you need, you know, validation, you can always get your book and confirm what you've been feeling or what you're reading, what your mind tells you. Uh, you know, use your book for as a guide, but not like a crutch. So that's what I've learned. And yeah, if I, if I can help anybody on their journey, then reach out in the comments. If you take part in this challenge, let me know so I can watch a video. And you have a beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you for being here, and I appreciate your time.